Hi everyone, in this video we're going to talk about predicting COVID-19 cases that are going to occur in the future. As you know, COVID-19 has been spreading in countries across the world and as of today, more than 5 to 6 million people globally have been infected by the virus. This virus continues to spread unabated and therefore predicting how many people are going to get infected in the future is a really important problem. It is an important problem today and given the spread of the virus, it is going to continue to be an important problem in the future as well. So what me and my students have done in this lab is that we've tried to come up with statistical and machine learning models to solve this problem. Now, why is solving this problem important? Because if you identify how many new COVID-19 cases are going to occur in the future, we can then identify where these cases are growing, try to quarantine those places, impose lockdowns, and then actually spread, like contain the spread of the disease. It is also important to actually allocate scarce hospital resources, as well as figure out where to distribute medicines. So this is an important problem. So what we have done is we've taken the data from Johns Hopkins website. So Johns Hopkins has been uh, collecting data of the number of COVID-19 cases from countries across the world and they've made this data publicly available. You can find the link in the description below. So we've taken the data from that website. For the purpose of this study, we have considered data from January 21st all the way to the end of April. So in this time period, what we have done is we've taken the top 50 countries. So our model that we have designed is going to work for all the different countries of the world. It is not tailor-made for a specific country of the world. Now, at that particular time, it was the United States that was leading in the number of COVID-19 infections, followed by Italy and Spain. Now, at this particular time, when I'm recording this video, this order of these countries have changed. There is lots of cases that have been reported in Brazil and Russia. And so this order of which country is going to have a lot of cases is going to change over time. But our model is, we hope, will continue to predict well in the future as well. So, importantly, you can find the code for all the work that we have done in the, in the description below. And you can download the code and you can run it yourself. And I'm, I'm going to explain how, what kind of model that we constructed for this problem. So what we have here is a time series problem. So there are a bunch of data points, which is basically the number of COVID-19 cases that have occurred in the past. And we want to use those to predict the number of cases that are going to occur in the future. Now, if you look at the screen, you will see that there are three graphs that will pop up from the United States, Italy, and Spain. And we can see that the number of cases rise, particularly in the United States, somewhere from the beginning of March, and, and they kind of flatten out after some time. They have not decreased, and even in the beginning of June, the number of cases being reported per day continues to be high. Now, for Italy and Spain, the number of cases initially increased, and then they have started to decrease. So different countries have, have different kinds of spread, and that's because of the different measures that the different countries have taken. So the data from different countries looks very different. So we have to predict this, um, how these COVID-19 cases are gonna occur in the future. So as I said, this is, can be looked upon as a time series prediction problem. You take a few days in the past, look at the data, and then try to, be, to, to predict a few days into the future. So what we have tried to do is we looked at a few statistical regression models because regression models are ideally suited for time series prediction problems. So we looked at five different models. The first one is linear regression. And what linear regression does is it fits a straight line to a bunch of points. And it then extrapolates this line to predict the points into the future. So on the screen, you will see how linear regression looks like for a bunch of data points here. So that's how linear regression works. We also looked at lasso and rich regression. These two regression models are similar to linear regression, just that they use different kinds of regularizations. Now there are a bunch of YouTube videos that you can find and they will talk about lasso and rich regression. I'm not going to talk about what those regression models are. We're going to look at how we can use these regression models to predict a, a predict COVID-19 cases, which is an important prediction model. Now, apart from that, what we've also looked uh, at is SVR, which is support vector 
regression. It is similar to support vector machines, but here we are using SVR for regression. So in, a, in addition, we looked at one more model, which is ABIMA, autoregressive uh, moving average model, which is a statistical model that is used for these kind of problems. It has a differencing term, it has an autoregressing term, it has a moving average term. So it's a pretty sophisticated model, which is used for such time series prediction problems. So these are five different models that we considered. And then what we did is we, did, we constructed an ensemble model. So the figure that you can see here, construct, you can see that there is an ensemble layer. What the ensemble layer does is that it actually takes these five models and then uses the, the model that is best. So different models will work well for different countries. And that is what we have seen from our study as well. So what we want to do is we want to pick the one that is best for the country that we are interested in or that the country that we're exploring. So this is how the entire setup looks like. So you can see that there is a data pre-processing component where we get the data from Johns Hopkins website and then we pre-process the data and then we run the different models on this uh, on the data and then we have an ensemble layer which selects the best model. Now, important thing for you, uh, for folks who want to try this out, it's very simple. As I said, the code is publicly available and if you even if you want to write your own code to figure out how you can do this to help uh, your local government, you can just use ready-made packages that are there in Python. Now, that's the that's a setup. Now, designing a model is only the first part. The important thing is how do you figure out if your model is actually doing well? So for time series, you have, like just like any other model, there are different metrics that are used to predict if a model is doing really well. One of the common metrics is root mean squared error. Another very common metric is mean absolute error. I'll not go into the details of both these metrics, but both these metrics are very similar, so, but I'll just talk about mean absolute error. Now, mean absolute error is basically the error in your prediction. Say your actual value that happens is 100 and you predict 120, your mean absolute error is 20. Is 20. Now, if your actual value is 1000 and you predict 1200, your mean absolute error is 200. Now, these are good metrics for a time series prediction problem where the data does not have a continuously increasing trend. Now, that is what has happened in the COVID-19 prediction problem. We can see that COVID-19 cases continuously increase and then for certain countries, they have stabilized. Therefore, if we use a metric like mean absolute error or root mean square error, what happens is that the value chain of the error increases and it does not give us a good estimate. Now, the two numbers that I said, like you, you, take, you have an absolute value of 100 and you predict 120, and you have an absolute value of 1000 and you predict 1200. In both these cases, the relative percentage error is 20%. That is, we are looking at how much percentage error you have in your prediction. So now, this is the model that we are going to use to evaluate our predictions. So we use relative percentage error. So on your screen, you'll see a table. And in this table, what we have is the average over three days into the future, like predicting on a particular day, say on a Monday, you're going to predict the number of cases on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and take the average of all those values, like the errors in all those predictions. And in this table, we can see that we do pretty well for a whole bunch of countries. We have less than 10% error for a bunch of countries. And for some other countries, we have slightly higher error, but the error is still less than 40% for most countries, which is pretty good considering the problem that we are studying. There are a lot of factors in the number of COVID-19 cases that are being reported. Uh, numbers could be reported erroneously. There could be limited testing. There could be other factors like when the, on which day the data was entered, simply because it's a real-time problem. And even if you get, say, 25% error, what does it mean? You're saying that the next day, if the number of cases were 1,000, you're just predicting 1,250, which is still good because you are capturing the trend very well. And this can be used for allocating scarce resources that the local government has to jostle with. So if we apply this ensemble model, 
which selects the best among these five models, we did we saw that we got good results for a whole bunch of different countries. Now, we also saw that for certain countries, we did not get good results. And those countries were like Germany, Japan, we do not get great results for Pakistan. We do not get great results for South Africa, Greece. So these were countries that are actually spread across the geographic and the economic spectrum. There are countries that are highly developed there and they are developing countries as well. And though we cannot figure out what the exact reason is as to why the, the model does not produce great results for these, it is good to understand why this could be the case. We, after looking at the data, we figured out that different countries impose different levels of lockdown and different countries had different levels of testing as well. For example, Germany did a lot of testing. So we believe that they caught a lot of asymptomatic cases and hence the number of cases that they actually captured were really high and the model just couldn't keep up with that. So this happens in any classic machine learning uh, problem or time series prediction problem. It's not that the, if it doesn't work for a particular country, the model is bad. That's not a way to look at it. It is just that we have to understand the capabilities of the model and what the model can do. Now, for a country like Pakistan, what we saw was that the numbers actually jumped a lot. Certain days there were high numbers, certain days there were low numbers. Again, we don't know the reason, but it could be just the way the testing was done or the day, way the data was actually reported. So the takeaway from all this is that by constructing such a model, we can do good, pretty good prediction performance for a lot of different countries. And we, the great part of having ensemble models is that you can add more models onto your ensemble. So you can add like a deep learning model if you want, you can add a graphical model if you want. The reason why we haven't added those and we are exploring those is that we haven't had a lot of data. This disease has only been spreading rapidly for the last two or three months and the, the amount of data that's there, or the number of days, is actually pretty limited to one very sophisticated model. That's what we are currently working on. If you're interested, you can do the same. You can stick in a deep learning model in there, create the ensemble layer for yourself and see how the results look like. So, I would encourage you to play around with these different kinds of models, see what kind of results you get, see how the trends are changing. And I believe that this kind of models can really help the local government. So you can actually use it in your country, wherever you are. So we are in this together. And I hope as computer scientists and as data scientists, we can actually use the data to, to predict how this disease is going to spread and use it to mitigate the disease. Good luck to everyone. Thank you for watching.